Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So a few days ago, I put a poll on my stories asking you guys what videos you would like to see over on my channel. The most common answer was the video about zoology, the degree I did, how to get into a career in zoology or conservation, and all those kind of similar questions. So that's what this video today is going to be about. My zoology degree, the volunteer work I did to get experience in my CV, and the route that I took after completing my degree at university. So I first decided that I wanted to get into conservation when I was only six years old on a family holiday to Bird Island, which is in the Seychelles. Now this is a place which is renowned for its conservation work with sea turtles. And one day my family and I joined a group uh, to release sea turtle hatchlings back into the ocean. There was a conservationist working on the island at the time called Robbie. Now Robbie asked everyone to wait while he went to collect the turtle hatchlings from the nest to then release them back into the sea. Instead of waiting, little six-year-old me kicked off my shoes and ran after him. And he picked me up, put me on his shoulders and he let me go with him. And when I returned, that was when I first said to my parents, I want to be a conservationist. And ever since that day, I've done all that I can to work hard to get toward that goal. Now, I'm still not there. I'm still a student myself. I went back to university just this year to do a master's in wildlife filmmaking. So I've definitely got a long way to go. But this is something I get asked about a lot. So hopefully even a little bit of insight will be helpful to you guys. To get into conservation, I knew that I needed to have a CV because it's a field that a lot of people want to be in and to get those jobs you need to have experience but no one wants to give you those jobs without the experience so it seems like a challenge but what you can do is volunteering now this is the funny one because a lot of volunteer work is unpaid which is fine i did a lot of unpaid volunteer work and that's pretty much expected in this industry but up to a certain point uh, that, what I mean by that is you're not paying extortionate amounts to go and volunteer somewhere and equally once you have your degree and your experience you're not doing free or unpaid work either. So I started volunteering when I was 15 or 16. The first place I volunteered was a dog shelter, dog rescue home called Diana Brimblecombe Animal Rescue. I was going to college in Henley at the time and on my days off on Wednesdays I would go to this dog shelter and help walk and train the dogs and do other bits and pieces that they needed me to do around the shelter. And that was kind of my first hands-on experience doing some sort of volunteering in the conservation field. And from then on I went on to volunteer at loads of different other places at Wolf Connection in Reading which has now actually sadly closed down where they had some rescue wolves and um, just a really small organization run by one old lady um, but she's decided to stop that now she does still have the wolves but just as a private collection she's not going to be rescuing anymore tropical world in Leeds where I was on the mammal section so working with the armadillos the meerkats and the owl monkeys which was amazing uh, lone pine koala sanctuary and then a few different places with elephants um, the Sirin project in Thailand and then another one in Sri Lanka as well which I can't remember the name of at the moment but I'll put the link below so alongside all of this volunteering I decided to go to university to study zoology now Zoology does not mean you're going to go and work in a zoo. You can choose to do this if you wish, but zoology is simply the study of animals and the natural world, including us as humans, because we are, of course, animals. It just means that you don't have to do the plant modules like you would do on a standard biology course. So I went to Leeds for my zoology degree. Um, this was originally a three year course, but I added on a fourth year to do the study abroad year and I went to University of Queensland in Australia for that study abroad year. And for me, this was amazing because it was the first time where I really got to do more animal stuff. Now, what I mean by that is that although the course at Leeds was great, it was very biology focused as it should be because as a zoologist, you need to know everything because you can go on to do a whole range of different careers afterwards from genetics to neuroscience to working with the police force as a forensic scientist to working helping do transplants or working in a zoo 
uh, conservation work, like it has such a broad array of jobs afterwards, so it really does need to cover everything, which is why then it helps to do a master's afterwards so you can specialise in what you're really interested in. So at Leeds, my modules include genetics, cell biology, lots of statistics, animal behaviour, lives of carnivores, um, organismal evolution, loads of different stuff. But when I went to Australia, it was much more focused on animals and the natural world, as you might think you might be doing on a zoology degree. So I was doing lab animal science and the ethics behind that. Um, marsupials and monotremes, which in England we don't have even. So going over there and studying and learning about them for me was really exciting. Um, marine science, loads of different things. and. That hands-on experience really helped to reignite my passion for zoology again. And this meant that then when I came back to England for my final year of university, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So in your final year, that is of course when you do your dissertation. Typically how that works, at Leeds anyway, is that you get sent a list of dissertation topics and supervisors and you put down your preference numbers one to five and it's based on grades if you get allocated your preference so kind of that incentive to work hard in the years leading up to that. I however <laughs> didn't want to do any of those questions. I knew I wanted to study something juicy that I would be really passionate about. Um, so originally I was going to do my project on wolves but unfortunately that fell through last minute and my supervisor offered me an alternative project looking at birds. Nothing against birds, but wolves and birds didn't quite match for me. So instead what I did is I decided to take on a master's student research, which I'd done the year before, and do another year's study on that same project. So I ended up studying African painted dogs or African painted wolves, have many different names, but their scientific name is Lycaon pictus. And I was looking at social learning and pack structure in the species, trying to work out if what we could learn from their social behaviour could be taken into the field to help their conservation work. And because I was so passionate about this, because it was research that I was really excited about, it meant that I ended up doing really, really well in my dissertation, which massively brought up my grades for the whole degree. So if you are looking to go and study a similar thing, I would say that it's really important to find a project that you're passionate about for your dissertation because this is something that you're going to be spending months on. And if it's something that is no, of no interest to you, you're going to find it really hard to study and do well in that topic. So that was all two years ago now. And then after university, literally three days after I graduated, I moved up to Scotland where I started working on a boat as a biologist and presenter, nature guide, all kind of combined into one, looking at the wildlife, showing people how to take photos of it, uh, doing counts that they use for marine data and at that time as well I also started using social media and I got my first proper camera as I like to call it or DSLR and started sharing the pictures that I was taking with others. Then I started really realising the power of science communication and this was something that I really liked because also as a young girl I did a lot of stage school dancing, acting, singing so it was kind of a way of combining these two passions of mine and getting science out there to the more general public. So I started doing more and more social media. I then went to ZSL to work with them as a presenter and that's when I also applied to do the University of Western England Wildlife Filmmaking Masters, which is run in conjunction with the BBC NHU. And that's basically where I am now. So yeah, I'm currently on the Masters, um, but we are in a bit of a lull, a bit of a confusing time at the moment with everything that's going on in the world. I was supposed to be finishing my degree uh, in September coming up, but this is going to be pushed back significantly. Part of that is that I get to make my own film. So I'll be travelling to Sumatra to make my film. I'll be telling a story about human wildlife conflict, working with an amazing NGO out there, and hopefully helping to inspire some behavioural change in the people that watch this film as well. That includes all of us. Because often we point fingers about different people doing things wrong in our eyes, but we can all be doing things better in our everyday lives to be helping animals in the natural world. So yeah, that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour of my experience, what I've done. And for anyone looking to follow a similar path, I'd say get as much experience as you possibly can on your CV. Email everyone asking to volunteer whilst you're still young. Make your own projects in your garden, showing that you have a genuine passion. 
read when you can, watch as much as you can. Just do what you can in your own time to show that this is actually something that you're genuinely passionate about every single day and that will shine through when you're then applying for university or for jobs. They will see that genuine passion in your applications. If anyone does have any further questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below or reach out to me privately on social media if you wish and I will do my best to help. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and good luck to any of you wanting to go out there and help save the world as well. Bye.